How do we connect with God in our material existence, where nothing lasts for long? Where do we connect to the source of life that never ends? Are there special holy places we can visit to connect with God? Or are we just strangers on earth who will be let down if we try to find the Spirit at a pilgrimage site? Is it possible to build special places for God to meet us? Or is a place only as holy as the people who meet there? Perception At first, his observations were only useful for diagnosing illnesses. Thousands of people got correct accounts of their illnesses and advice on how to treat them. Casey was the founder of the modern holistic health movement because he used natural medicines and stressed the importance of healing on all levels, including the physical, mental, and spiritual. As he got older and learned more things, like how to meditate and understand dreams, a rich and deep set of lessons about the spiritual centers started to come out. Casey did a lot of psychic readings, but most of them were for specific people and helped them figure out how to deal with problems in their lives. In some of those cases, he thought it was so important to understand the spiritual centers that he went into great depth about a kind of chakra picture. When an artist drew based on Casey's suggestions, these charts showed the seven spiritual centers. The size of each chakra depended on how important it was in that person's awareness. Casey added to a subject that has been important in Eastern religious thinking for thousands of years. They came up with at least three important ideas which we'll talk about in this show. First, there is the link between the body's endocrine cells and its spiritual areas. Casey says that the whole body is affected by the hormones that these cells release into the bloodstream. Second, Casey talked about how the chakras are linked to the growth of mental powers. Lastly, his information gives an interesting account of places in the Bible where spiritual center lessons can be found. One of the most important things he did in this area was to figure out how to use the Lord's Prayer so that different parts of it can help balance and open the seven chakras. But Casey isn't the only person from the West who is interested in the chakras and what they mean. We can go back to the work of the German prophet Jakob Burma and those who followed him in the 1600s. Johann Gitchell, one of Burma's teachers, wrote about a model of the human body in 1696. It shows a deeper understanding of the body, one that makes the spiritual areas and the flow of energy between them very clear. Recently, a number of people who lived at the same time as Casey have given in-depth talks about the chakra system. The Austrian philosopher and psychic Dr. Rudolf Steiner taught a way to meditate that was meant to make the spiritual areas mature and balanced. There are about 350 books that make up his combined works, but many people think that knowledge of higher worlds and its attainment is his best and most important work. This book goes into great depth about the chakras and gives spiritual training a whole new meaning. Another person who lived around the same time as Casey and wrote a lot about the chakra system was C.W. Leadbeater, a famous theosophist in the early 1900s who wrote a well-known book on the subject. Leadbeater was psychic, so his writings were a mix of academic research and his own direct experiences with spiritual places. Leadbeater was quick to point out that the chakras can only be understood by understanding how complicated people are. There are a lot of different kinds of action going on in the spiritual places. Among other things, each center is connected to a nerve bundle in the body. He also knew, like Casey, that each chakra was connected to a hormonal gland. Even more important, chakras can be found in the mental body, the spiritual body or soul, the finer physical body, what Casey called it, and the etheric body, what other people have called it. What proof is there that these bodies have such higher energies? Curly and photography, which has become more popular recently, shows interesting signs of energy fields that go beyond what we can usually feel. Emanations are unique to each living thing from a tree leaf to a human fingernail. In this method, something is put on a photographic plate and a small electrical current flows along it. Even though there is disagreement about what is being discovered, a lot of people think that this is the start of solid proof for the spiritual body. 
Another set of examples can be seen in art, where holy figures often have halos and auras around them. Is this just an artsy way to show that someone has a higher awareness, or does it come from an old and wise tradition? Some people think that these pictures of light going beyond the physical body are a warning or a sign that we all have levels of energy that aren't normally seen. Most people agree with the Chinese medical science of acupuncture. It seems that more and more doctors in the West are using these methods these days. In acupuncture, it is taught that the body's meridians carry subtle energies. Putting needles in certain places can clear the way for this basic life force to run again. Casey, Steiner, and Leadbeater, who were psychically sensitive, talked about subtle energy bodies in the same way that most of us talk about the weather. For all this proof of higher energy bodies, the old beliefs about the chakras may be based on something real. According to people who know a lot about chakras, these seven energy centers are in the subtler bodies, especially the etheric body or what Casey called the finer physical body, which shows how related and powerful it is to the known flesh body. But what do the spiritual places do for real? What do they do? The chakras join the mind body and the spiritual world to the physical body and the material world. That link is useful in more than one way. One is to send energy, which is the force that makes things alive. We could use the word transducer from science to describe what the spiritual center does. You can change one type of energy into another type of energy with a converter. A simple telephone is an example of a sensor. It changes the energy patterns of the electrical impulses that move along telephone lines into sounds that we can hear. This is a good way to explain one of a chakra's main jobs. It takes energy from the spiritual world and makes it available to us in our bodies by changing its rhythms. To understand how the chakras work, we need to know how energy flows through them. These centers, called chakras, let energy flow into the body. Energy also flows from one center to another, which we'll talk about in more detail later. One more thing that these seven link points do is store the soul's memory patterns. There is no clear answer to the question of where memory is kept. Medical science has never been able to figure out where it is. Some evidence suggests that different parts of the brain are responsible for different types of memory. However, other evidence suggests that the brain alone cannot explain all memories. To be more specific, memory seems to be stored in cells all over the body. Casey and others say that the spiritual centers are important and that memory is also stored in the higher energy bodies. Different chakras are marked with different kinds of designs. Some hints of this can be found in everyday language. Some types of experiences and memories are naturally linked to certain parts of the body. The way we talk gives us hints about the chakras. Words like broken-hearted, fire in the belly, stubborn, and stiff-necked imply that memories of love and feelings are stored in the heart. Worries about power and initiative are stored in the mid-abdomen, and stubbornness is stored in the neck and head. In reality, these and other popular phrases just support an old idea about the chakras. There are seven main areas of human experience, and one of them is connected. To each of the spiritual centers. The first chakra, also known as the root chakra, is usually said to be in the groin area or at the base of the spine. It has to do with basic survival, both the survival of the species through reproduction and the survival of the person through meeting their own needs. There are a lot of memories and patterns of behavior that are stored in the first spiritual center that are connected to this part of our lives. The second chakra is in the lower part of the belly. It has a lot to do with the opposites in life, especially the balance between the male and feminine parts of each of us. The careful balance between yin and yang or inactive and active shapes how we think feel and act in many ways that are connected to the second chakra. It's easy to become one-sided when this center is out of balance. We might try to make one part of ourselves stronger than the other, or we might put the weaker part of ourselves onto someone else. 
In either case, it has to do with how we interact with other people. In the solar plexus area is the third spiritual center. It has to do with how power is used in both the personal and the material worlds. When it shows up negatively, it can be fear, anger, or hatred. But when this center works in a healthier way, it gives people the strength to be brave and take the lead. In the heart area, just behind the breastbone, is the fourth chakra. It's the center of love, but not the kind of love that applies to everything, which is the seventh center. When there is a lot of confusion and misunderstanding at this point, it can be felt as envy, anger, or even worry. In the throat area is the fifth spiritual center. This is the chakra that is linked to free will. When it's used negatively, it can make some people stubborn and willful, while it can make others unable to make up their minds. When it's working right, it lets you make your own choices while also being open to and following a higher will. Casey says that the sixth chakra is at the very top of the head and goes down through the middle of it. In a spiritual sense, it is the mind of the world Christ. In this place, logic and instincts work well together. Here, the soul can remember things, even from past lives. Last but not least, the seventh chakra is right behind the forehead. Psychically, this is the most important place. The seventh center is connected to oneness and spiritual love, even though it is a little lower in the body. It is the chakra for healing on a spiritual level. With just a little meditation, you can feel these spiritual areas' direct presence, their live, active quality. Though naturally, how each person actually feels about this will be a little different. Some people will feel something in certain parts of their body right away, while others will have a gut feeling about the flow of energy in certain areas. Still, others may need to do the exercise more than once before they can see effects. So, find a nice place to sit. For this task, you might want to close your eyes. To get the centers of your body as balanced as possible, sit with your back straight. You don't have to do much or anything at all to do this meditation routine. Just pay attention to what is being said and let the words lead your experience. Now, before we talk about the spiritual centers, take a moment to notice how easy it is to move your mind into and through different parts of your body. Bring your attention to your left elbow. Feel what's going on there, because the nerves, body, skin, and blood are all alive and working there. Then touch your right big toe. Feel the awareness of your body and do something about it. After that, to your chin. Notice how easy it is to shift your focus and become very aware of what's going on in different parts of your body. Now while you're completely still and calm, feel your whole body. Take note of how alive it feels, how fast and deeply it breathes, and its pulse. From where does all that life come? Where does its life come from? A body with more energy, a body with more fine details, or a theropod is inside your body. It's a copy of your physical body, but it's made of higher waves and a stronger flow of energy. It's possible that you can feel it right now. It might even make you aware of or feel something that goes a little further than your physical body and is full of energy and consciousness. The seven spiritual regions, or chakras, that make up our astral body are all inside it. Turn your attention to where the first chakra is, which is near your gonads, which are your sexual systems. How do you feel about this? This is where creative energy comes from. The root chakra is another name for this spot. Does it feel alive and full of energy, or does it feel clogged up and slow? Then, bring your attention a little higher to the second center. This chakra is linked to creation and finding balance between yin and yang. How do you feel about this? Do you feel like the energy is even, alive and creative, or does it feel off and uneven? Now put your attention on the third chakra, which is in the area of the solar plexus. How do you feel about this? When used in the real world, this is the center of power. Have you got a sense of fear? anger or hatred in this heart? Or does it make you feel proud and brave? Now we'll talk about the fourth center, 
which is the heart chakra. It has to do with love in general and romantic love in particular. What do you notice about the way the energy is flowing here? Do they really feel open, caring, and sensitive? Or do you feel jealousy or worry? Bring your attention to the fifth center, also known as the throat chakra. This is where free will and choice are found. How do you feel about this? Do you feel that delicate balance between making your own decisions and being open to a higher will? Or do you feel a strong tendency towards stubbornness or indecision? Next, think about the sixth center, also known as the crown chakra, which is in the middle of your head. In this place is the source of holy force and higher thought. It moves in a spiraling circle that opens up into the space above your head, ready to take in energy and information from other places. How much do you know that it's there? How much of its action have you forgotten about in your daily life? Finally, bring your attention to the seventh center, which is just behind and at the top of your forehead. This chakra is for spiritual healing and being one with all life. How aware have you been that it's there? No matter how awake or asleep you were in the past, just be aware of how it's working now. Your life's music is made by your seven spiritual areas, which are like the seven instruments in an orchestra. There are times when one instrument plays louder than the others, making them hard to hear. Which of your chakras might be more likely to do this? At other times, the seven points seem to be in sync with each other working together to make balance. This is the time to remember a good time and think about how your seven chakras were working together and in tune with each other. Now let your mind slowly return to how it was before. Now take your mind off of these small amounts of energy in your body and focus on being aware of your body and the world around you as usual. After that, you can slowly open your eyes if they were closed. How did that make you feel? Was it easier for you to understand what some chakras were telling you than others? Don't forget that the spiritual centers are not just places in the body. They are also present and working in the mind. In our minds, pictures and images talk about these seven levels of experience, even if we are not aware of it. Of course, these symbolic feelings can sometimes tell us how healthy and balanced we are in a certain area. This is a type of feedback system that can work in meditation or dreams. But there are also pictures that are used in religious or other cultural practices that can trigger or even change certain chakras. The meanings of the first four spiritual areas have been shown as a group of pictures at times. Like in the Bible, they show up in both Ezekiel's vision and the book of Revelation. In a deep inner experience, Ezekiel had a vision in which he saw a wheel. Inside the wheel he saw the beast's spirit, and there were four of them, the calf, the man, the lion, and the eagle. There are four pictures that show up again in the Revelation of John, which is the last book of the Bible. It says that the four beasts, which are the four lower chakras, must bow down to the greater self. The pictures were linked by Edgar Cayce to the chakras, which are symbols for the four lower levels. These first four centers are mostly about our experiences as physical beings in the material world. They are the earthly side of us. The three upper chakras, on the other hand, are about the spiritual side of us all. There are certain pictures that Casey says are connected to the spiritual centers, but there are also other kinds of connections. The first four areas can be linked to the four basic elements, earth, water, fire, and air. The eight notes in the scale are the seven colors of the spectrum. The eighth note is a return to the original tone at a higher level, which stands for the seven chakras being in balance. As you listen to music, the first spiritual center is represented by the color red, the note do, and the element earth. This chakra is always represented by a bull or a baby. The color orange, the sound ray, and the element water all stand for the second chakra. A common picture for this center is the human body, but it is an erogenous body in which the male and female traits have been balanced. This is the chakra that deals with the soul's desire to be whole and bring differences together. 
Because sexuality is a part of that process, signs of physical union are also linked to this area. There is a third spiritual center that is yellow, has the tone me, and is made of fire. A lion or any other big cat is a common sign here. This is the chakra for power over yourself. In the spectrum, the color green, the tone fa, and the element air all stand for the fourth chakra. Any bird, not just an eagle, can be a good sign for this spiritual center. It is in the body, close to the lungs. This area is linked to the things we care about and love. The fifth spiritual center is color blue and the sound so. It's the chakra of will, making choices and finding your own identity. It can mean the drive to look for something so we might see signs of a faraway goal. And on the spiritual path, there are times when we have to give up our own will in order to follow a higher one. In Christian art, this is represented by the cross. However, as Casey said, the cross should always be paired with the crown, which is a sign of the next chakra. Casey says that the crown center is the sixth center. The color is blue and the tone is la. This is the Christ nature chakra for everyone. Its image is the higher mind, old knowledge, or an older wise person. Casey says that the seventh center is a little lower in the body than the sixth, but lessons about where the sixth and seventh centers are often contradictory and have different points of view. The color is violet and the note is T.I. Not all sources agree with Casey. Some say that the sixth chakra is located at the forehead. This is because the actions of these two chakras are so connected that it might be best to follow the Tibetan method that sees them as one big activity. So, the meanings of these two top chakras are likely mixed up. It includes attempts made by people or on top of mountains to reach higher in search of God, the sun, the church, the tower, or any other kind of light. For those on a personal spiritual path, just knowing the symbols for the chakras can be helpful. It can help us figure out what our dreams or pictures that come to us while we're meditating mean. It also gives us a new way to look at the past of sacred ideas. Every chakra is a real spiritual hub. When you really connect with the energies of one chakra, it can bring up the global pictures that are stored there in everyone's mind. But we can learn more about what the chakras mean and how they work. They are in line with global patterns and with people's minds, and they also have a direct effect on the body. Casey and others have said that in terms of general health, an endocrine gland and a nerve bundle reflect each of the spiritual areas in the body. There is a big effect of the endocrine glands on almost every part of our bodies. They send strong chemicals called hormones into the bloodstream. In turn, those hormones control everything from metabolism to growth to getting old. Casey's answer to the mind-body question is based on the endocrine system. The way the endocrine system works has a big effect on both health and illness. Because chakras in higher energy bodies have a direct effect on certain endocrine cells. The endocrine system is related to the mind and the soul. The first chakra is linked to the gonads, which are the sexual organs. Casey connected the second spiritual center to cells of lysis, which are very small places that are actually inside the reproductive glands. Different sex hormones are made by glands that are connected to both the first and second chakras. Because these two hormonal areas are so close to each other, it may help explain why some systems, like the Tibetan, sometimes treat the first two chakras as one. The adrenal glands, which are on top of the kidneys, are linked to the third chakra. Most likely, this is the hormonal area we know the most about. An adrenal gland is actually a gland inside a gland. The outside part makes many chemicals that impact the reproductive system, blood sugar, and the amount of minerals in the blood. Noradrenaline and adrenaline are the two hormones that are released from the inner part. When we are stressed, angry, or scared, its effects show up in our bodies. We always feel a rush of energy from it. A hormone can have a huge effect on the body even in very small amounts. When you take adrenaline, 
your heart rate, blood pressure, and breathing speed up, and your body suddenly stops digesting food. A single thought of fear or anger is all it takes to set off this complicated response. This shows how the third spiritual center and the endocrine gland that goes with it work when they are stressed and out of balance. Luckily, there is a bright side. Each chakra and the hormonal gland that goes with it can be stimulated in a healthy way. It is possible for each spiritual center to bring good traits into the body through the endocrine glands when the mind and soul are working together in harmony. The thymus gland, which is right behind the breastbone, is linked to the fourth chakra. This part of the body's hormonal system is linked to the defense system. Doctors know. It creates thymosin, a hormone that helps the body fight off infections by making more immune cells. Casey connected the fifth spiritual center to the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland has hormones like thyroxine that control the body's metabolism. It is located around the windpipe. When the thyroid isn't working right, a person often gets a goiter or swelling in that area as the gland tries to get back to normal. Casey linked the pineal gland, which is in the middle of the brain, to the sixth chakra. Philosopher René Descartes said hundreds of years ago that the pineal gland was where the soul lived. Medical science has since firmly disproved this idea. But Casey and other people have connected this area to the sixth chakra. The pineal gland releases the hormone melatonin, and light hitting the eyes has a direct effect on the production of this hormone. One thing that melatonin does is change how active the cells of the second spiritual center are. This biological link between the sixth and second chakra hormones will come up again when we look at how Casey talked about how kundalini energy moved between the chakras. That's all there is to it. The seventh chakra is linked to the pituitary gland, which is the body's master gland. A group of master control hormones are made by it, and they affect the other endocrine centers. Pituitary gland is in a rigid cup that is mostly filled with sinus openings. Because of where it is located, some meditators think that deep breathing and even singing may have a direct effect on the pituitary gland and, by extension, this greatest chakra. Even though the spiritual areas are always working, they don't always do so in a healthy and balanced way. There is a lot of power in each chakra, but most of the time, that power is blocked or shut down. Then we can talk about opening a chakra, which means making our experience of the possibilities in that center stronger. Don't take this lightly. If we're not ready, the energy can be too strong, and the soul patterns in that chakra can be harder to understand. Because of this, the Kaisi readings say to let the centers open on their own. Do not try to open them by force. Kaisi even says that this message can be found in the Bible. This part of the strange book of Revelation tells us about a deep meditation experience John had. This experience is mostly a metaphor for his own inner life and ours. The seven hubs are shown by the seven buildings. The higher self talks to each church and tells them about their flaws and strengths, as well as the general patterns of each chakra. John also sees a book with seven locks during this deep thought. This is another sign of the seven spiritual areas. It's not time for him yet, so the seals won't let him open the book and read from it. Casey says this is a lesson about our own spiritual places. People don't fully open to all of their possibilities because it might not be good for us for them to open too soon. How is this chance ever going to happen? In the book of Revelation, the Lamb comes and opens them, letting John see what's inside the holy book. The Lamb is a symbol of the Christ who is everywhere, the spirit of love, kindness, and giving up oneself. Do not try to push the centers to open. That is the clear word. There are, without a question, ways to open the chakras, get a powerful rush of spiritual energy through them, or even have a very amazing psychic experience. 
We should believe that as we grow mentally, the centers will open and give us stronger experiences when we are ready for them. This is a better and more healthy way to do things. In her readings, Casey also talks about a way to work with the flow of energy through the centers and let them naturally open. Again, it comes from the Bible, and a deeper idea that most people may not have known about. There is a direct link between the chakras and the Lord's Prayer. Casey says this is one way to use this special prayer, but it's a powerful and safe way to focus on the centers, especially as we start to meditate. Before we can understand how the Lord's Prayer can help, we need to look at how energy moves between the chakras. Don't forget that the spiritual areas let spiritual energy run in two directions. To begin, there are the ways that the unseen spirit world is linked to the real world. Second, and this is just as important, energy moves from one chakra to the next. It's like a network that links them all together. Here is where Casey's ideas about the chakras differ from many Eastern ones. According to Case, the Kundalini energy shouldn't move up and then activate the chakras from lowest to highest. Instead, the energy should go straight from the first and second centers to the two highest ones, like a fast train that skips all the places in between. <laughs> you can take this creative life force straight to the pineal center. Then the lower belly chakra and finally the root chakra. It always came back to the solar plexus chakra. This third center is kind of like a hub for everything. When the energy starts to flow down from the top of the head, this continual return to the third chakra makes a flow pattern that looks like a figure eight, with the solar plexus as the place where the two patterns meet. Not only do the chakras hold soul memory patterns and touch places for the life force, they are also tools for knowing and perceiving. But what kind of information do the chakras give you? Not a lot of information about the world around us. Our eyes, ears, and nose are there for that. You can get information about things in the mental and spiritual worlds through your spiritual areas. The Casey readings offer a model for understanding how mental awareness works. This model includes the chakras as an important part. We normally use all five senses to understand the real world around us. We are aware of at least some of what our senses can pick up. A lot of knowledge is blocked out or ignored because it would be too much to handle otherwise. This is true for both the physical body and the etheric body, which is the finer physical body. It comes from the spiritual and mental worlds. The chakras work like tuning forks. They carefully choose what kinds of information and feelings the subtle body will receive. Casey says we should compare ourselves to a radio. If we change the setting, we get different radio streams. You can receive certain kinds of mental information more easily through some chakras than others. When all of the chakras are in balance and unity, the subtle body is also more attuned. There are many places to get information from the spiritual and mental worlds. Some of it is accurate and helpful, while other information is unclear and false. Psychic events that are upsetting can happen when the spiritual areas are not healthy and balanced. Of course, a lot of people asked Casey about how to improve their own ESP. A lot of the answers from his studies were about health. Through the chemicals of the hormonal centers, the chakras can affect the body in the same way the body can affect the chakras. As an example, when we do practices that improve the health of the physical body, we change the amount of sensitivity in the spiritual body. The spiritual centers become more in tune with each other when the physical body is balanced. This makes it easier for the finer physical body to connect with the greatest levels of mental awareness. What glands or brain areas are connected to different types of mental perception? The thymus, or fourth chakra, is connected to telepathy. This kind of mind-to-mind -mind contact works best between people who care about each other deeply. The adrenals, or third chakra, seem to have something to do with mediumship, which is the act of using your body to help the dead talk to you again in this world. Some people think that Casey himself used this kind of psychic ability, but, but he didn't. Casey didn't usually push people to develop this kind of psychic ability. 
The long past of mediumship, on the other hand, says that the solar plexus is where mental energy or even the voice comes from. The thyroid gland, or fifth chakra, may be linked to speaking in tongues. The pineal gland, or sixth center, may be linked to remembering past lives. And the pituitary gland, or seventh chakra, may be linked to spiritual healing. You could say that spiritual healing is the top level of mental experience. It is controlled by the pituitary center and is affected by all the chakras as well. One way to get spiritual healing is to lay on someone's hands. Touch healing has been used for hundreds of years. For instance, the Bible tells us many times that healing power can be passed from one person to another through touch. Since the spiritual centers are home to the soul patterns that affect all kinds of sickness, it makes sense to think that healing that focuses on certain chakras might work. Casey didn't call the hands chakras, but his readings and many other sources that talk about subtle energies say that the hands are where spiritual forces first arrive and leave the body. The truth is that our hands can be used for healing, connection, and light. How could we make this happen? First, we can practice laying on of hands on ourselves. Then, after meditating, we can send healing energy directly to a place that seems to need it the most. For instance, putting on of hands for the throat chakra might help you make a choice when you feel stuck. It would be good for you to lay hands on yourself at the heart center if you are having trouble with a love relationship. The readings say that the left hand is open and the right hand is busy. This seems to be a general rule. The left hand should always be on the front of the body, and the right hand should always be on the back. If you want to focus on the pineal center, also known as the sixth chakra, you can just put both hands on top of your head. Putting your left hand over your heart and then reaching back over your shoulder with your right hand may feel a little strange for the fourth center. Don't worry about whether or not you can stretch your arm far enough. The other chakras will be much easier if you keep your mind and energy on the spiritual center. This could be done for anywhere from 30 seconds to several minutes. Casey also told people who are dedicating a lot of time to meditation and self-healing to practice putting on of hands for others. When the illness is in a certain part of the body, like a leg, an arm, or something else, directing energy toward the chakras may work then there will probably be direct touch on that spot during the laying on of hands. Putting your hands on the chakras may also help with any kind of illness, whether it's mental, emotional, spiritual, or physical. The person who can heal must use their own intuition to figure out which spiritual areas need healing and balance the most. Which chakras need to be affected the most in order to heal this illness? Touch healing on the pineal and pituitary areas is usually a good idea. Put both hands on top of the head, with the right hand, which sends energy, on the back of the head, and the left hand, which receives it, on the forehead, no matter what the problem is. With the left hand on the front of the body and the right hand on the back, you can follow the same steps for any of the other five chakras. It's not the process itself that makes laying on of hands work. Knowing the best way to place your hands is helpful, but what counts most is that the healing path is spiritually attuned. If you do laying on of hands for yourself, you might or might not feel anything. If you feel something, it's probably warmth or a real sense that energy is moving. But changes are happening in the subtle energy bodies whether you do anything or not. When you put your hands on someone else, the same thing applies. The person receiving the touch may or may not feel anything, but the healing work is still happening even if they aren't aware of it at that moment. Before we go into one last experience with the chakras that you can use again and again, let's go over the main things we've already talked about. From what the Casey readings teach us about the chakras, these strange links to the spiritual world, these main ideas come out. 1. Our bodies are where we connect with God and the spiritual world. 2. Every chakra is a spiritual point, and they are all important to our search for spirituality. 3. Each of the seven chakras affects both the flesh body and the endocrinology bodies. 
This is what Casey called the finer physical body, and other people have called it the etheric body. 4. It's not really a new idea that spiritual centers exist. If we look closely, we can find lessons about them in the Bible, and if we look at our own dreams, we'll probably see pictures that represent how they work. 5. In order for higher, more subtle energies to appear in the physical world, the chakras regulate the flow of spiritual energy and serve as sensors that alter vibrational rates. 6. The seven centers are connected to each other like a network. The energies can flow from one center to the next in a planned way, especially when we meditate and clear our minds. Finally, number seven. The patterns of the soul are kept in the spiritual areas. Let's do one last activity that will help us put all of these ideas together. You can do this creative activity every day, but it might be most helpful right at the start of a meditation session. Casey said that people shouldn't actually meditate on certain chakras, but balancing and aligning the spiritual centers could be a part of getting ready to meditate. While you're sitting down, make sure your back is straight. Now take a moment to slowly and deeply breathe in. Feel your chest expand as you do this, and make sure your lungs are full. That air is like life itself. Let go of everything as you let out your breath. You and your body don't need any more old hurts, dirty air, or tired thoughts about your life and yourself. Then take a big breath in and let it out, completely relaxed. You can even let your eyelids start to fall if you want to. They will feel nice and heavy and relaxed. Take a deep breath in one more time to fill your lungs and body with life and energy. Then let it go. You feel very calm now that you've let go of everything you don't need. No matter if your eyes are closed or your breathing is more gentle, you can still feel the power, energy, and vigor of this breathing beat. Flowing out is what you no longer need from your past. Now just pay attention to your body. There is a lot of creative energy flowing through it. It's very calm but also alive and full of life. Your mind is calm and clear, but still open and ready to receive. Now you'll become more aware of how your body works and the spiritual forces that flow through it. This is going to be a great experience for you. You will become more aware of the energies that are always present inside you as your awareness grows. Today, your awareness will grow as far as you feel safe going, and you will have a very good healing experience. Now, just pay attention to your body. It's like you have more than one body inside you. One of them is your physical body, and the other is an idea or higher energy body inside you. That bigger body has seven energy wheels that are moving light swirls. Remember that these spiritual places are at the base of your spine and the area around your reproductive glands, in your lower belly and solar plexus, at your heart, in your throat, on top of your head, and on your forehead. Move your awareness through your body from bottom to top. Every single one of these things is a spiritual thought. Each one is necessary for a good and happy life. Some spiritual force can flow into your life through each of these chakras. Feel your need for unity and balance in the things that these places do. Know that you can make that happen with the power of your mind if you pay attention and use your imagination. You will use your imagination to guide the flow of energy through these chakras in the best way possible, starting with the shapes of the words in the Lord's Prayer. You'll feel like this creative energy can be taken straight to the greatest places. The root chakra is the first spiritual center you should feel. This is where the kundalini flow starts. Say words of trust to that point in silence. The heart has to do with basic life. Its main goal is to have the physical tools it needs to live. Speak words of faith to it like, There will be enough. Today I will receive whatever I need. The energy will then be free to move up without any problems. Now, talk to the solar plexus in silence. Allow this chakra to accept, let go, and forgive. Next, Pay attention to the chakra in your lower belly, which is made up of cells that are lit up in the middle. The things that come up in life won't get in the way. You're being led. Have faith that the best way will be shown to you. 
Then, talk to your heart in silence. All ways of life that don't involve love are taken away. Kundalini energy will be able to go straight to the highest center without having to go through the heart center first. Imagine that creative energy flows straight from your second chakra to your sixth chakra at the crown of your head. This is a free flow of life force. This energy from inside you leaks out at the top of your head, letting even more energy flow down into you. Bring all of your attention to that old center right there. Just be in that world. You could feel the spectral color blue that goes with the center inside you, or you could just feel white light. Feel that energy flow down a little to the pituitary center after that. All of your attention, though, is on your face and the pituitary gland inside you. This could feel like the brightest color in the spectrum mixing with the hats, or it could be a golden light that stands for the greatest center. Feel this energy as it starts to go back down. The two highest chakras' vibrations have been absorbed by it, and it can now work with the other chakras to balance and perform healing. The energy should go to the solar plexus chakra and the adrenal cells. You could direct this energy even more by laying on of hands for yourself. Put your left hand in front of your right hand and backwards and say good things about the center, persistence, and courage. You might feel the third spectral color here, which is yellow. Think of a yellow light that you can put in this area. The energy that balances and harmonizes will be sent out from this solar plexus chakra. Now it goes back to the root chakra. You could do the laying on of hands for yourself to help focus the energy. Put your left hand in front of your body and your right hand behind your body and say good things about this center's strength and liveliness. Red is the color here for balance. Let a bright moving red light bring life and harmony to this center. Now that the energy is going back to the solar plexus and then out to the second chakra, focus on a spot in your lower abdomen, about six inches below your solar plexus. Say positive things about this chakra when it's working properly, like creativity and finding balance between life's many opposites. Put orange light in the middle. This creative energy flows back to the solar plexus and then to the heart chakra. Feel and support the good things that can happen in this core like love, kindness, understanding, and compassion. Feel like this spiritual center is filled with a green light that makes everything work together in harmony. Feel how the energy comes back to the solar plexus to be refreshed, but it still has the rhythm of the pineal and pituitary centers on it. That energy goes to the throat chakra and quietly supports the good things about this area like having free will, making decisions, and following a higher purpose, and let a blue light fill this chakra and spread out from it. After that, let the energy come back to the solar plexus one more time. If you could be quiet for a moment, imagine a group of fine musical instruments, each with its own unique sound. All seven of your spiritual centers are alive and beating in time with each other. The music that comes out of them is how you meet the world and other people every moment. These seven doors to the spiritual world are now a little more balanced and in tune with your soul's greatest purpose.